workers of iniquity, they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come to you, Lord, as humbled as we know how, Lord God. Just thanking you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Just thanking you, Lord God, for breathing the breath of life in our bodies, Lord God. Father, we just ask even now that you just come into this place of worship, Lord God. Fill us with your love, your grace, and your mercy, Lord God. We ask that you just take control over this service, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you just continue to fill our cups, Lord God, that it may overflow, Lord God, with your love, Lord God. We ask a special blessing over our pastor, Lord God, and his family. Continue to order his steps, Lord God. Continue to lead God and direct him down the path that he should go, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for our guest speaker on this day, Lord God, that you touch her body, Lord God. Bless the Lord God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you just bless each and every individual here under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Bless those that are tuned in today, Lord God, via Zoom and Facebook Live, Lord God. Bless all of those, Lord God, that just need you in this time, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask, Lord God, that you just continue to be with us, Lord God. We seek you to give the glory, the honor, and praise. All these and other blessings we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Worship and coming to lift the door here. Hallelujah. Come on, for he's worthy of all the praise.
about to be invocation by our very own deacon this person, amen. Amen. Come on, Jesus is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you again, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for just being here with us on this day, Lord God. Father, we just thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives, Lord God. All that you have done, Lord God, and all that you are going to do, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask a special blessing, Lord God, over those that are sick and shut in, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you just cover them, Lord God. Keep them covered with your blood, Lord God. Have your will and your way in their lives, Lord God. We pray for those, Lord God, that are bereaving, Lord God. For those that have not lost loved ones, Lord God. For those that may not have a mom one today, Lord God. We just ask, Lord God, that you send a comfort to them, Lord God. Just wrap your loving arms around them, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for each and every individual here on this day, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you just continue to keep the world in the palm of your hands. We know you to be a God of all things, Lord God. So we just ask you to speak blessings, Lord God. Your continued coverage over us, Lord God. And that you continue to just bless us how only you see fit, Lord God. All these and other blessings we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
affirmation of faith. We confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in the covenant of love, which binds us to God and in one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into the newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. church, uh, we would that you would come, pay your respects, amen, if you can't come in person, seating is limited, but certainly we would that you would join us uh, on Zoom as we honor the life, the legacy, amen, celebration of life for Reverend Javette Goodman, amen, amen, come on, can we just give God praise for the gift of life, amen, certainly she is no longer struggling, amen health issues, amen, for certainly she has a new spiritual body, amen, for the Bible teaches that to be absent from the body, needs to be 
present with the Lord. Amen. Uh, certainly we know that there are so many uh, those that have lost mothers. Amen. That great gift. Amen. And so at this time we just want to offer a moment of silent prayer as we honor and remember the mothers that have gone home to be with the Lord. Life. We're still a very active, very community-oriented church, amen, and so uh, the one of our part, partner agencies, New Life Counseling and Mental Health Services, will be presenting uh, Pastor Mike amen. on LGBTQ Mental Health and Wellness, amen, a host of, uh, a host of panelists, our own uh, Brother Charles Webb, soon to be doctor. Soon to be, soon to be doctor. Another Dr. Webb, amen. And your, uh, yours truly, Pastor. Webb will be a panelist, amen, as we uh, deal with uh, a discussion on mental health, spirituality, compassion, and overcoming challenges, amen, as it pertains to the LGBT community, amen, amen. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, this offering time, come on and give God praise, it's offering time. And we made offerings so, so convenient, amen, amen, so convenient, you can still be in your pajamas again. Uh, you can be in the kitchen frying up the bacon. Hallelujah. And still give. Amen. And so we're giving electronically. If you would like to give uh, by way of check or cash, we do have trustees in the building. Amen. And we do receive an offering. But we receive an offering by way of cash app and by way of give a fly and by way of PayPal. Amen. Amen. Isn't that convenient? Amen. Convenient and no excuses. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm doing all this talking, so you can, if you don't have it on your phone, download it now. And if you're giving by way of Cash App, the Cash App number is 973-670-1899. Again, 973-670-1899. If you're giving by way of PayPal, it is newlifebloomfield at gmail.com. Again, newlifebloomfield at gmail.com. And if you're giving by way of give a fly, it is, again, New Life Christian Church in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Amen. It said that you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. Giving is part of our spiritual duty. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to give. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing. Come on. It's a blessing. My heart's desire. My heart's desire is that I give 90 and live off the 10. I know we're supposed to uh, give 10, but I want to live off the 90 and give and, and, and give 90 and live off the 10. And God is He's going to increase my, my, my means so I can live comfortably. I am. this offering and then I'm going to introduce our our preacher for this morning. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this time of worship through giving. We pray your blessings upon every every gift that comes into New Life Christian Church. Realizing, believing that all gifts come from on high. So God, we thank you for the giver. We thank you for those that had a mind to give, but not the resources. Now, Lord, bless this offering, bless the tithe, a hundredfold, for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, say it's preaching time. Come on, it's preaching time. Amen. And, and my brothers and my sisters, we have one with us today that 
is able and willing to rightly uh, has studied to show herself approved uh, a workman that is not ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. She is uh, no stranger to this church. She is a friend of the pastor and of this church. Amen. Amen. She has studied uh, across the years. She is a graduate of the New York Theological Seminary. Come on, bless the Lord for being seminary trained. Hallelujah. She just didn't turn her collar around one day and say, I'm a priest. No, she studied. Amen. 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 If, if, if Jesus prepared, amen, it behooves us to prepare. Amen. She is a teacher by profession but a preacher by vocation. My Lord. Amen. She is one that can and will preach. Yes. My brothers and my sisters, after the singing of our praise team, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our preacher, our evangelist for this Mother's Day. None other than Minister Dominique Roberts. Amen. If any man, woman, boy, or girl have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come on, praise him. Sing us happy.
by the word of God. So if you would indulge me for a minute, I'm going to read Exodus 2 uh, verses 1 through 10 and then I'm also going to read Luke 1 verses 26 through 38. All right. Exodus 2 verses 1 through 10. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not hide him any longer, she took an ark of bulrush and dabbed it with slime mm. and with pitch and put the child therein and laid it in the flags by the river brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maids walked along the river side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, 
and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. And then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Right. <laughs> and we're going over to Luke, the first chapter, and the 26th verse. And it says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth shall have also conceived the son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we know that it is true. Now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight, and that you would give me clarity of speech and soundness of mind to deliver your word unto your people. In Jesus' name we pray. So in this particular text, right. we have two mothers who have the task of raising deliverers. Mm -hmm. Two men, one mortal, one immortal and mortal, who were born with the purpose of setting people free. Uh -huh. Moses was born to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and into the promised land. And Jesus was born to save humanity from sin. Mm -hmm. Two different tasks, two different time periods, but both of them were born to women. Mm -hmm. Women who were important to the redemption story of God's people. And women who had to rely on their faith and trust in God to know that he would ultimately take care of their children. If we look at the text, um, the stories and the situations are different. But what is the saying is the faith that is present in both of these mothers. How many of you, you know that it takes faith to be a mother? Right. Jehokabed, Moses' mother, had to have blind faith. She did not have the luxury of an angel telling her who her child will become. For the angel, the only face that the only angelic face that she saw was the face of the child. In Exodus 2 and 2, it says she saw that he was a goodly child. The message Bible puts it like this. She, it says she saw that there was something special about him. Mm -hmm. There was no angel telling her that his kingdom would have no end. There was no angel telling her what his name would be. As a matter of fact, she didn't even name her child. Right. Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses. But there was something in the eyes of that child that let her know that he was special. Yeah. There was something in the eyes of that child that let her know she had to do whatever she needed to do to make sure he fulfilled his potential. Right. Jehokabed's mother was living in bondage. She was living in a depressed place. There was violence all around her. There was no justice for her people. 
Pharaoh had ordered that they kill all the newborn Hebrew boys on the birthing stool. Yeah. And when that didn't work, he ordered that they throw them into the Nile River. So she was living in a society that did not love or value the life of her child. Work, work. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. We're living in a society that does not love our children. My, my. And they're trying to kill them even on the birthing stool. Killing them with the food that they eat. Killing them with the music that they listen to. My, my. Violence between each other. Cops killing them in the streets for no reason. Killing our children even on the birthing stool. And when it does not work, it seems like they're trying to throw them in a midst of a violent society that would take them out. Amen. We got black girls who are going missing every day, never to be heard of again. We are living in an Egypt. We are living in a, so a society that does not care about our children. My, my. But there's something about the faith of a mother. There's something about the love of a mother. There's something about the prayers of a mother that will cover and keep a child even when the enemy wants to destroy them. Yeah. Why don't you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Thank you, God. When it came to her child, it did not matter what was going on in Egypt. Jehoiakim looked in the face of her child, and the only thing she saw was possibility. Well. She didn't see that he was a Hebrew boy. She didn't see that he was a slave. She didn't see that the odds were stacked against him. She saw a beautiful, angelic baby boy, and she said, I got to do everything I know how to do to make sure that this boy grows up. Right. Right. She went into warrior mom mode, and the first thing she did was she hid him. But the Bible says that she hid Moses for three months, and it is our job as mothers to hide our children from evil as long as we can hide them. I remember growing up, that's my first point, you got to hide them from evil, but I remember growing up they did not allow us to see and hear and know everything. That's right. My mother did hair in our kitchen, and she would be in there talking with some of the women from the church or whoever it was. And when we would come in and try to get a snack, she would say, come, go on, go back out. Right. This ain't for you. This right. is not your business. Stay out of grown folks' business. But the problem today is that we expose our children to everything. They know everything that's going on in the home. They know everything that's going on in the community. They know everything that's going on in the church. And we wonder why we can't get them into the right. sanctuary. Right. Right. Because you talked about the deacon. And you talked about the evangelist. Yeah. And you talked about the prophet in front of your child. And now they have no respect for the men and women of God who we understand are not perfect. But you got to understand that when your child sees that you take them for where they're supposed right, to be right, right. we don't have Sunday school anymore and we don't have children's church and we're, we're raising a generation of children who do not know God and you're on the Zoom and you're on Facebook and you're in the sanctuary and your kid is playing the video game and your kid is laying in the bed and what's going to happen to them when they get older and they need to know how to call on the name of the Lord the right. things that got me through in my life is that I had a foundation. Yeah. And even when my mother and father didn't go to church, they made us walk down the street and go to church by ourselves and made sure that we knew how to call on the name of the Lord. So when I got in trouble and my mother and my father were not there, I was able to say, Jesus, I'm depending on you to see me through because they hid me from yeah. That's my first point. You're talking good. Moses' mother hid her from hid him from evil. Right. For three months she hid him from evil. And when she could not hide him, she created a safe place for him. So the Bible says that she built an ark. And many translations will make that into she built a basket. But that the actual term there is ark, and the only other time that is used in scripture is when they're referring to Noah's ark. Right. Uh -huh. So she built a fortified place right. where her child would be safe from the dangers of the world. Think about what, what Noah did when he built the ark. He spent time in preparation, making sure he built something that was adequate to keep the storm out, to keep the 
rain out, to keep the winds out, to keep the flood out. And here is Moses' mother building a little ark to put her baby in. She's covering it with slime and she's putting all these things around it and she's doing it so that she can keep the Nile River that's filled with Egyptian cobras and snakes and hippos and all these things that could kill her baby. She's making sure that she builds a fortified place where he could be safe. And that is my second point. As mothers, we have to build safe places for our children. Right. Noah was building that ark. He was saying, it's going to rain. I know it's going to rain but I'm building something to protect my family. And here we are living in perilous times, living in a time where there is no justice for our people, living in a time where there is no protection, living in a time where we don't know what the future holds. But as mothers in God, we have to be building an ark. We have to be building a solid foundation. We have to be covering that ark with the blood of Jesus and filling it up with prayers. So that when the winds come and when the rain comes, that there is something there to protect our children. I'm a high school teacher. And I'm in, I, I had gotten to the point where I said, I don't, I don't like it anymore. It's draining. Mm -hmm. It's draining because when you are in these schools, and I, I you know, I do, I, wanna, I love my job, I love the students. But when you are in these schools and you hear the language mm -hmm. and just the interaction and you're exposed to the family situations, it becomes so devastating that it tears you up and it wears you out. So I've been doing this for 13 years and I said, I'm tired of this. But this is the society and the environment that young people are living in where they go to school and they go out on the streets and they are not safe. And when they come home to your houses and when they come into houses of faith, that is where they are supposed to feel safe. They're supposed to feel the love of their parents. They're supposed to feel the presence of God. Right, right, They're supposed right. to be guided and, and, and directed into the ways of righteousness. For the Bible truly says that if we train them up when they are older, they will not depart. But if we're not putting the, the, the knowledge of God and the word of God and the love of God and the blood of Jesus over the lives of our children, they don't have any place to turn. We have to get serious about the business of raising godly children. Not perfect children, but godly children. Right, right. Children who are able to say no. Children who know the difference between right and wrong. Children who are not going to bully and be ashamed and accuse and do all of these things because they had the love of God in their hearts that were placed in there by their parents. Yes. So the second thing that Moses' mother did is she created a safe place. Right, right, right. Let your home be a safe place. Amen. Let this church be a safe haven. Yeah. Let you be, even if you're not a mother, you be a safe place for a child that they may be able to go and find rest and find safety. The third thing that she did, and this is one of the hardest things that we, we have to do as mothers, and I'm not there, my child is only six, but she released him into the hands of God. She hit him, she created a safe place, and when she could not do anything else, she released him and had the faith to know God. that God was going to see him through. Yeah. And so Moses' mother, she put him in that ark, and she, she covered him in her prayers, and she sent him down the Nile River. And a lot of times we watch these movies, A Prince of Egypt and different things like that, and we imagine that the Nile River is just this little stream and Moses was just <laughs> flowing along in the stream and Marion was running. But the Nile River is the longest river in the world. Right, and right. it's a dangerous place full of dangerous insects and reptiles and animals. She released her child into a dangerous place and had to have the faith to know that God was going to bring him safely right. to his destination. Right. She didn't know where he was going to go, but she believed that if I release him into the hands of the almighty God, he's going to cover him by the shadow of his almighty wing, and my son is not going to die. I see how she was seeing all these other Hebrew boys. They were dying on the birthing stool. They were dying and being thrown in the Nile River. 
but she said there's something about my baby there's something about my child there's something about this one that God allowed me to bring into this world and I don't care what's going on I don't care if he's a drug addict I don't care if she seems to be a little bit fast I don't care if she's not doing good in school I don't care if her mind is all twisted I don't care what's going on there's something about this baby when I looked at her when she was born when I looked at him when he was born he was goodly there was something about him that was special and even though it seems like he's turning his back on the word of God even though it seems like he's turning his back on the will of God drugs got his mind music got him messed up pants hanging off his butt he got kids out of wedlock whatever is going on I, it don't matter because I'm going to release him into the hands of the almighty God and on his He's going to lift him up and on this stream, he's going to take him through and he's going to arrive at his destination. Oh, I feel you, God. Oh, I feel you, God. Look at what happened when Moses got to Pharaoh's daughter. When we have faith that God is going to do the right thing by our children. Even when it looks like everything is going wrong, he has a way of blessing us because of our faith. Moses' sister followed that ark, and when she got to Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter, she said, should I go and get a Hebrew woman to nurse this child? And she said, he, she said, go ahead. She went and got the mother, and Pharaoh said, nurse this baby, and I'm going to pay you to nurse this baby, and I'm declaring on today And we were 
before I had my daughter. So I know the pain that we often feel as barren women, or women who do not have children, who desire to have children. But if I can encourage you on this morning, from Isaiah 54, the Bible lets us know that barren women should, be, should rejoice and find comfort in God, because it says more are the children of barren women than the children of, than of, the, children of the women who, who actually conceived. So if I can just encourage you on today, if there's any woman out there who is feeling the weight and the heaviness of the loss of a child or not being able to have a child, just understand that God sees you and he cares about you and he knows you and he knows your name and he's giving you seed. Maybe if it's not natural seed, but there are children who are out there who need, who need mother figures and who need to be nourished by mother figures. So hold up your head, woman of God, if you've lost a child or if you're waiting for your time, keep on praising, keep on encouraging yourself in the Lord. Keep on having faith because I know that he can do it. I went through many Mother's Days crying until my daughter was born. And when she was born, the Lord was gracious to me because we went in to um, have her. We went in for a, a, a routine checkup and the doctor said, you know what, I'm going to induce your labor today. For some reason, I just feel I should induce your labor today. Go home, pack a bag. So I went home and I packed the bag, and this was after losing three babies in two years. I went home and I packed the bag, and when we got to the hospital and they hooked me up to the machines, I was having contractions and I couldn't feel them, and the monitors kept going up. So the nurse ran in and she said, you can't feel those contractions. I said, no, I can't feel them. They said, well, every time you contract, the baby is in distress. We're gonna give you an emergency C-section. They gave me an emergency C-section and the cord was wrapped around my little baby's neck that would have been my fourth baby that I lost in, in, in what, two years. So I've been so grateful to God. He sees us, he knows, and he won't put more on us than we can bear. So be encouraged, woman of God, if you are waiting for your time to be a mother to come. Be encouraged because the Lord loves you. The Lord has need for you. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing that you did wrong. Just know that God loves you. We thank you, and I'm not gonna keep you long because I know it's Mother's Day, but God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for your ability to receive and hear your word, God. I pray, God, a special prayer on these mothers and a special prayer on those who are awaiting to become mothers, God. I pray, God, that you will strengthen them in their most holy faith, God. That you will gird them up in your love and your righteousness, God. That you will give them a heart, God, and a mind, God, to raise godly children, God. That you will lead them and guide them in the ways of truth, God, so that they can pass on that knowledge to their children, God. Oh, God, we pray, God, that you would open up 
up the windows of heaven, God, and that you would pour out your blessing on them, God. God, that they would be able to provide for their children, that they would be able to provide for their families in the name of Jesus, God. And we pray, God, that you would settle all anxiety, God, that you would settle all fear, God, and that you would replace it with faith, God, the faith in you to trust that you are going to bring them through, God, and that you are going to bring their children through, God. And we thank you, and we praise you, and we honor you, and we magnify you, and we lift you up, and we love you, and we exalt your name, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Holy Father. Amen. Oh, 
houses. God, we pray for godmothers. Those that stand in the gap as mothers. Bless only as thou canst. God, we say thank you and we give you the praise. Now, Lord, when praying days that shall be over, Your throne of grace. May the presence of God.